Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is about a selection, in this case of a sky, using both luminosity and colour. And you can use variants of this for all kinds of selection. This is a particularly tricky picture because, amongst other things, you've got a ragged edge, but not only that, but you couldn't really use the refine because there are bits of sky poking through way down here, which will kind of make it a bit difficult for the refine to figure out which is sky and which is not. So what we're going to do here is going to use black and white and uh, in particular the black and white adjustments. So I go to the adjustments here and go to the black and white. This goes above here, by the way, because I've got set here adding adjustment as new layer. Anyway, what we find with this is if I pull something to the left, then it makes things darker. If I pull things to the right, it makes things whiter. Particularly for the, here, I've got foliage, for example. If I pull that to the right, that goes a lot whiter. But if I go to the left, it goes a lot darker. In fact, see, this is going now towards black. So here, I'm beginning to see the sky a lot more. It's bringing it out whilst keeping the little holes and details in here. So I can literally do this with each thing in turn, figure out which way I want to go to make it black. But when I get to cyan and blue in here in particular, I want to make that white. So I'm going to pull that over to the right. The blue's that going to go far enough? Notice I pull this over here and I've still got bits in there, but don't worry about that. And what's this going to do? Not very much. You often get that magenta is not always present in a picture, but sometimes of course is. So this gets me part of the way there. So I've got things detail in the trees here and also bits here. I could use levels but I'm also going to here going to use curves and uh, you'll see why perhaps. And what I'm going to do here now, as you can see the histogram here, there's a big hole in the middle, is I'm going to pull this across here. Notice here these greyish areas here and so on are going black but it's not affecting the sky and that's the key thing for this. So I can take that far enough across there, and if I drag the top here over, then I can get rid of those the remains of the clouds in the sky. What you can do with curves as well is to adjust this, and you might be able to get an improved selection of getting other remaining bits out of here. Because what I want here, of course, is that I want white to be the selected area and black to be area that's not selected. If I zoom into this, I look at the edge here, you can see that there are areas here. It's quite well selected. It's got a, a sufficiently non-rigid, you know, non-hard edge to it. And uh, it's always good to zoom in when you're checking things like that. The problem now is this piece here. So you can see here, I need to actually select all this up here. And what we can end up doing here is to do a, this is where you do need a bit of, of the selection. But we've selected the main tricky bits with the things so far. So what I'm going to do now with this, I'm just actually going to turn these off here. So I'm going to go back to natural selection because I want to be able to select all this. Just go to the selection brush and I just want the top part of this house. So I can just go here, snap to edges are on, make sure I've got the pixel layer selected and then it will I can paint into these areas here, then just need to go far enough down. And this is all going to be black, so just to cover off the areas there. And then I can click on the bits here, get a little taps on it to expand that selected area. And then I will go to the refine. And I'll look into here, zoom into here, see if there's other areas here. So I need to tell it to things like, well, it's the mat here. Let's increase the, there, see if we can pull in that there. So yeah, it's got that there. Click bits here. So can I figure this edge a bit better? No, so I click the foreground to say this is foreground here. Just do it in clicks and it's getting bits here. And you do whatever you need to, to do within this general selection. Okay, that will do. So I apply that. 
I will output that as a, as a selection as I've done so here. Then what I'm going to do is to put in above here a fill layer. So layer, new fill layer, and I want to make that black. And then when I turn on the other areas, layers here, control detail off that. Now I've got the whole thing selected. So now I've got this. I've got a bit more detail here, this stuff I want to take out as well. So I can simply paint on the fill layer mask, which is kind of built in. So I literally go to the um, black here, is it, and paint on here, or is it white? Yes, it's white paint on there, isn't it? So to paint those things away, so any remaining bits and pieces, so I've got all that complex sky now selected. So all I need to do now is to go layer, merge visible, and then these here I can just turn off. I control G to stick them in a group so they're nice and tidy out the way, but I can always come back to them if I need them. And with that mix pixel layer there, right click that <coughs> and turn that to a mask. So now I've got a mask and I've got the sky selected there. What I'll often do with the mask is until I need it, I'll drag it down to the bottom so I see the whole picture. Because above here, then I can do whatever editing I want to the sky. Just for example, we'll go to curves and we're going to say darken the sky down a bit. Then I want to apply just that mask to it. So I take that, drag it up to the, so you've got the vertical blue bar. And now this is just on the sky itself. So there you go, complex selection using three things, black and white curves and a fill to tidy it all up. That's it and thank you very much for watching.